Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach doing a little lunchtime video. Uh, what you see in the background is me um, changing iron sights issue number one. I had originally done this kind of monochrome uh, sepia tone style of coloring. Uh, but what happened was the artist got so much better over the, the five issues that I decided to just make it black and white. So I'm going in there and uh, uh, making it all black and whitey. So I think I got some more of it open here. So yeah, here's some of the pages right there, earlier pages. Uh, but uh, what I wanted to do a video on was this. So uh, I think two days ago, Joe Quinones did a list of standards of behavior for customers. <laughs> I, of course, memed him into oblivion. Uh, he didn't respond, he just took it down, which uh, to me is acceptable. Um, but uh, it really just kind of gelled what kind of atmosphere. Uh, stories about toxic fandom are very, very popular in the press. This comes out of the Gamergate days. This comes out of, um, honestly, it's a lot of high school. A lot of the, you know, I'm a big fan of Occam's Razor. The, the simplest explanation tends to be uh, the correct one. What happens is you got a bunch of people who are nerds in high school, and this is the, the people at Marvel and the people at, uh, you know, Kotaku and all those websites, CBR, and now they're in positions of power, and now the bullied become the bullies. So uh, it, it, of course, is completely insane that in an industry that's shrinking, that has 50 stores go out of business, that... Uh, apparently this week a store that kicked out somebody for liking jawbreakers then went out of business like three weeks later um, that there there's no standard of, that doesn't exist there's not such thing as a standard of behavior for customers like I mean th in the most basic way you can't go to a bodega and just start like running your hands down the shelves knocking all the the cans of food onto the ground Whew. Man, I'm just, I get scared just thinking about it. Even as a, for instance, that's, dude, you just die. <laughs> you die and it'd be on the news and everyone's like, well, yeah, of course. He went into the place and he knocked everything. Yeah, you know, you know, bodegas are a whole nother world. Y'all don't understand. If you think a bodega is just like a family-owned 7-Eleven, I could do a whole doctoral thesis on bodegas. Anyway, getting into this. So uh, John Malin forward slash our guy forward slash uh, great guy, great with the customers, great artist. Oh my gosh. The thing is, uh, I write very loosely. I mean, I will give literally, for a page that has five panels, I will have five sentences. And they are very short sentences. Silkworm does this. Devil Dog does this. The bad guy does this. And I get these pages from John Malian. And he, he just takes his, his freaking imagination. It not only is he a good draftsman, which means literally he can draw well. But his imagination is insane. I had this guy, I literally described him as Warlord. I didn't even give him a name. Um, <laughs> and I saw, you got to see this guy. When you see him, you're going to want an action figure of, of him. So uh, anyway, so John Malin, and I actually haven't looked through this. I only, I, I just heard about it. Um, uh, <laughs> I'm in Twitter jail, so it's kind of sad to be on Twitter. Because he, oh, I want to respond. Uh, I can't respond for three more days. Um, but anyway, so John Malin did his own one. Uh, so since uh, Joe Quinones said uh, we need to fix toxic fandom, uh, uh, Malin says uh, we need to fix toxic. You know he's doing a bit, but the stuff he says is is important and it's it's very good. So he says, uh, beginning a campaign to remake toxic comic pros working for companies they don't own on characters they don't own. From a company's perspective, who's with me? <laughs> so this is like he, he's doing a bit on the, the like cutesy pie, fake nice way that SJWs talk a lot. And one of the other things SJWs always do because they think they're better than you. They think they're like teachers. Uh, so they will announce when a discussion begins and ends. Um, so uh, and uh, again, the uh, the bit that Joe Quinones does is he says new fans. So he's basically for you new fans. Here's the rules. Because I, I guess when he's saying new fans, what he's saying he's, is they're just flat out rejecting and pushing away the old fans. So he says, new pros. Uh, this is business. Whew. You're going you're gonna to shock people with that one. Um, resp uh, it is. It's a business. That's why I always make the analogy of a hot dog. It's like, well, I'm an artist. No, you're an artist when you draw uh, uh, Trump and he's got devil horns. Oh, my gosh. Uh, <laughs> and he's eating babies. Oh. 
that is so woke. Uh, you're uh, a business person in a customer facing industry when you're drawing Spider-Man or America Chavez or Batman or whatever. Respect fans. They decide if we have money or not or you're fired. So one of the frustrating things about being a comic fan right now is that there are a lot of uh, literally uh, so-called business decisions made out of spite. Bringing back Cena Grace, bringing back Iceman, uh, putting so-and-so on this book or, you know, uh, this is all done literally in this little mean girl's atmosphere. Um, so one of the things I say to myself to make myself feel better is uh, the fans don't get to decide who gets hired, but we get to decide how much money you make. You want to be Sean Gordon Murphy showing off a new sports car every year and, and drinking, you know, the, the, the high class, high expensive whiskey in front of a fire. I, I love when he posts stuff like that. You, we... We can. Now, I'm not saying we we make him by himself. His hard work, his talent, his interaction with fans. But that's what you get. That's the lifestyle you get. You want to diss the fans, call them Nazis. You get sad posts from Christopher Sabella about, well, can somebody uh, PayPal me money for a can opener? I was trying to eat cat food and my 25 year old can opener broke. Starving. Please send. Drinking, bathing at the library bathroom right now. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> So, uh, so the next rule for new pros is know that few fans care about your far left or right views on race, gender, and know that you are a caretaker of not just our characters, but our very fandom. Build fandom or you're fired. Um, next rule, if you can't handle not being able to force your views on fans, don't engage. So that's something very, I was going to say funny, but that almost sounds like I'm being sarcastic. Something very good happened to Dan Slott recently. Um, now, I haven't been a fan of some of his stuff, but I, I haven't said it's low quality. Uh, Dan Slott, you know, has a, a, a addictive personality to online behavior. I'd say I have the same. I'd say a lot of people, you know, that post regularly do. Um, but I don't know if someone had to come to Jesus talk with him or he was just reading which way the wind was blowing. But when C.B. Sobolski came as EIC at Marvel last uh, winter, Basically, Dan just wrapped it up on social media. Um, and uh, this has helped him. It's helped him in the fan reactions. It's It, it gets much harder to say, so-and-so used to do this, but he doesn't do it anymore. That's my whole plan for my reputation. You know, I started off first, uh, I'd say the first six months, very, very controversial. Kind of like a shock jock from the 80s and 90s. And some of the things I said do get brought back onto me, to which I respond when I can respond, Twitter. I just say... When did I do that? <laughs> When's the last time I did that? Like I've said many times, um, uh, in the Marine Corps, I was taught not to say thank you or uh, apologize for things, basically. You know, if, you, if you're appreciative, keep doing the right thing. If you uh, are apologetic, stop doing the wrong thing. So, um, so Dan Slott basically stopped. I think he realized that he couldn't be on social media without talking about politics, so he just took himself off, off of social media. His work has improved. The reaction of fans has improved. The, the reaction, all of these people who have been roasting him, Yellow Flash and everyone, man, they were like, oh, like down on their knees, like the, the fanning motion, like in front of a god. Uh, when he did uh, Amazing Spider-Man 800, they loved it, loved it. So um, you can't repair your reputation with fans and benefit from that. You just have to, it's real simple, just stop calling us Nazis. And if you, if you can look in the mirror and say, I can't not call them Nazis then you can just remove yourself from social media. And he makes a very good point. Um, uh, I don't, you know, I'm, I keep calling myself conservative and I remember I talked to conservatives and I'm like, oh, I guess I'm just a normie. Uh, I, I, would, I would say I'm on the right. Um, I, I don't like hearing about right-wing politics. I, not even far right, just like right. I, I don't like hearing about politics. I don't like hearing about Trump. Like, it's, can, I just, can, can, can the Scorpio just rob a bank? <laughs> Spider-Man stops him and maybe there's this twist the Scorpion gets away. And then you find out Scorpion didn't really rob the bank, but his, his niece needed an operation. Dude, like, just don't forget the stories, dude. Keep it simple. Keep Politics is not fun. Like they say, politics is Hollywood for ugly people. And it's also, you know, uh, for ugly thoughts. So just stop it. Um, 
uh, be a good representative or go F yourself. So I wouldn't have said F yourself. Um, uh, we are not a platform for you to harm us, our characters, or fans. It's a very, very good point. Uh, we've seen from uh, uh, malicious individuals like Tim Doyle, Kieran Shake, Daryl Leo, um, that what they uh, are is they are kind of like uh, picket men in the front with the, you know, the, uh, the pickets, the spears. They are the um, cannon fodder. But they're being used by pros who literally just want to hurt us. They don't like us. They malign us. They say, you know, Kelly Sue DeConnick, don't buy my book. It's like, I have a question. Did you notice we weren't? <laughs> Look at your sales. Um, uh, but yeah, be a good representative uh, for the company. Uh, you know, uh, be normal. If you, if you have the ability to be normal, be normal. And if you don't have the ability, have the wherewithal to take yourself off the stage. Um, this one I love. Respect all colors, especially the color of money. You are only here to maximize cash flow for yourselves, us, and this industry. If we see you under, under, undercut it, you're fired. So, um, Chris Abella, again, I use him as an example. When uh, Magic Mirror Comics was, uh, you know, uh, doing their hot take about, you know, what their customers were allowed to buy and then literally kicking Dylan out when he has product in hand to pay for it. The thing is, I was talking to Dylan, I go, I go this is kind of weird because... When you're in a business, you don't suddenly go, oh, uh, I guess we're going out of business tomorrow. Like, you see it, even if you're a bad businessman, you see it coming for months and months. So when the store, I think it was the owner who actually kicked him out. No, 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 because you know, the person told him that the owner said to kick him out. Um, that owner had to know that they had at best like a month or two left. So I, I, that just blows my mind. I mean, you'd think you'd at least want the last little bits of cash just so you can pay off your creditors, people who loaned you money, you know, because it's not like you just leave. I mean, you're going to get that electricity bill like a month and a half later. Um, but uh, <laughs> the thing I'm, I'm saying is that Chris Savella did this thing. He's like, I see they're being uh, haunted by alt-right Nazis. I'm going to do a bunch of signed comics and send it to help them out. So, and then Heather Antos did the, you know, the fake sympathy thing for them. The thing is that the SJWs are the people who have put these stores out of business. They've created unsellable product that gets stuck on store shelves. This stuff is non-returnable. When you order 10 uh, issues of Squirrel Girl, if you sell one, you don't get to send the other nine back. You just eat that cost. Um, and the thing is, it needs to be, you know, uh, it, you know it's, it goes in many directions at once, but stores can't survive off of SJW Comics. And the more SJW Comics you make, the more they die. They need product to give to the customers. Jamal Igo likes to pull this little, you know, barracks lawyer bit. He goes, well, technically, the customers are the stores, and we don't have anything to do with the final uh, sales to readers. It's like, yeah, that's true. But when you're making bad comics, you're screwing everyone. But you're screwing the, the stores most of all. We need the stores. Uh, you know, the pros need the stores, the stores need the pros to, the, to make good comics that they can sell to the customers, the end customer, the final customer, the guy who reads the comic. Um, challenge yourself artistically, grow, improve so you can make more money or you're fired. So I wouldn't agree with this 100%. There's some people that get to a certain level and then they kind of plateau. But, you know, I remember Paul Ryan, not the politician. This guy, he used to draw, he, he died a, about a decade ago, but he drew Fantastic Four. He was a really great artist. He kind of leveled up, and then he, uh, you know, he kind of leveled off, but he was always good. But um, I would say his storytelling got better, even if his draftsmanship kind of leveled off. But you should grow, because one of the things about growth is that growth is exciting. Um, and that's the thing that's not exciting about stagnation. After a while, you look at, it, you know, artist X, and you say, they were drawn that way 10 years years ago that I mean again Jamal Eigel uh, he had a very quick ramp up uh, some of his first books were um, the flash and Green Lantern and now he's drawing black by Kwanzaa like and the reason is that his art in 2018 looks the exact same that it does in 1998 there's no growth so you do need to grow or you're stagnating, the industry is stagnating. Like I said, when, when all of a sudden this art, if you guys have not, if you guys have only seen John Malin from the stuff on uh, Thunderbolts and Cable, like that stuff's good. It's really good. 
uh, I love his cable run. You don't understand how much better he is on Jawbreakers. It's shocking. Um, and that's exciting. Uh, comics is basically an excitement medium. That's your, you know, where they say this, you sell the sizzle, not the steak. Well, you, the sizzle is everything. That's why the, the image days were so exciting. You know, Rob Liefeld would sell two million of uh, Young Blood, and then uh, you know uh, Jim Lee would sell five million of uh, Wildcats, and people were like, oh, I wonder what what what's what works going to make. I mean, these sales figures. I, I I love how the sales figures for Indiegogo's are public because you get to see it. You know, SJWs are always claiming these phantom sales. Ooh, my, my online sales. Ooh, my digital. Ooh, my uh, Scholastic. You can't see it. You can see uh, uh, Ethan Van Skyver is about to uh, um, blow past me. Um, in sales, not in handsomeness. He has no chance on that. Um, but he's about to beat me on sales. And again, I, my campaign's been up for like two and a half months. His has been up for like 25 days, and he's about to beat me. That is exciting. That makes more people want to go to it. So you got to be excited. You got to grow. You know, you're even uh, you're either moving forward or you're moving backward. Um, Delight in your preconceptions being challenged. Like money equals bad thing, you weirdo. Uh, so uh, I talked about how uh, SJWs basically pre-excused themselves for failure and have created a post-sales, post-success industry that is really a club. Um, so basically, you know, you see, again, <laughs> Christopher Savella, he gets one low-selling miniseries after it, but he always gets another one because he's got the right politics, he's got the right identity. If you look in his little description of uh, his Twitter and this is very common in comics. They will write if you're if you're not straight, they'll write their sexuality. They'll write queer or bi or gay. It's and you're like, why? I don't I don't have straight in my in my Twitter bio. <laughs> it would seem it wouldn't make any sense. They do that because obviously it's an advantage. It helps them. Um, uh, but uh, they can't sell comics. They can't do it. They re well they refuse to do. It. They refuse to do saleable ideas you know uh popular ideas um then the next rule is go watch that scene for, with baldwin from glengarry glenn ross and replace leads with fans imagine he represents us talking to you so we don't have to be that guy know that you are here to sell so uh al ewing uses block bots uh i think mainly just against me maybe against the word comic skate um but i you know i used to kind of try to promote him and people are saying he's blocked me I'm not buying this book. Over and over and over. I've got hundreds of comments that said that. So I was like, um, yeah, I, it's really hard to. I can't, can't do it. So I've started prefacing reviews of his stuff, which says, this is by Al Ewing. He blocks you. And do with that information uh, what you will. Uh, but uh, somebody was, you know, some fans were actually really respectfully talking to Tom Breaver and they're like, uh, ask me anything. And they're like, this guy's blocking me. I don't feel good about buying him. He doesn't know me. He just blocks me because I know someone. How do you even know I support that guy? Maybe I'm just curious about what Diversity in Comics says since he's so controversial. Um, and Tom Brevoort made these really odd analogies that your Twitter was like your home phone number and it was like crank calling someone. It, it didn't make any sense. But uh, he literally said uh, that... Uh, Al Ewan's job was not to sell comics, but to write one. That, again, is one of those needle scratches. I don't have a business degree, but, I mean, I would say I'm a fair tick in selling things from you know, what I've been able to do uh, with my Indiegogo. And that is the biggest record scratch sound effect. When someone at a business says, the guy who writes the story, the story decides what gets drawn, the guy who's basically the architect, his job is not to sell comics. That's when I say, y you need to go. If I was if I was a CEO, if I was EIC, that would be like, you're gone tomorrow, and we're gonna call the temp agency. <laughs> you know, <laughs> no, obviously the, the next person down would, would take over. But that is a fundamental misread of not just this industry, but industry in general. You know, the guy at the pickle factory who uh, you know screws the the lid on the pickle. His job is not to sell pickles. His job is very specifically to put the lid on the pickle jar. Al Ewing, in 2018, you know, the, the current atmosphere with social media, his job is to sell the comic. Uh, in both writing a good comic and either interacting well with, with the uh, customers or 
just letting the book sell for itself, uh, speak for itself. He's doing the opposite. Opposite. He's uh, unselling comics. Um, so then he shows the thing from Glenn, Gary Glenn Ross, but I don't want to see uh, watch it because then uh, whoever owns the rights to that video will get all the shekels from this video. Um, <laughs> I don't know what this is right here, but uh, okay. So uh, a uh, a good um, uh, positive response from the people who read it. So anyway, uh, I agree uh, uh, very strongly with uh, most of the points that uh, John made. Uh, this is an industry; it's meant made to sell things. Good product sells things. Good salesmanship sells things. Good interactions with customers sell things. You got SJWs; they refuse to do all three. Then they want to give us rules. Okay, let me just tell you. Let me give you some advice for your retiring years from your 50s to 70s. Uh, spend the extra $2 for the uh, the higher quality uh, can opener because you're going to be cranking that thing for the next 30 years. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe. Make sure you still subscribe. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks everyone for giving to the Super Chat, the Patreon, and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content. And I'll have uh, more new comic reviews up later today. I think I'm going to do the latest issue of Man of Steel by Brian Michael Bendis. I love it. Can't believe I'm saying that. Uh, thanks for watching. Bye.